Hey, I'm Jack. I saw your orientation. Oh, hey, I'm Susanna. Oh, hey, nice to meet you. Where'd you go to school before this? Uh, I went to Baker. Oh, okay. Well, hey, if you ever need any help, just let me know and I'd be happy to help you. Oh, okay, thanks. All right, it was nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. So how's your first day been? Oh, uh, pretty good. Yours? Pretty good. Have you made any friends yet? Yeah, I met this guy, Jack, so far. You know him? He's like tall and blonde. Yeah, Jack. Yeah, he seems sweet. He's in my math class, actually. Oh, cool. Yeah, he sits somewhere behind me. Oh, what's up, man? What's up, bro? Yeah. Hey, man, uh, just get a new girl, Susanna? Yeah, she's pretty cute. Yeah, dude, she's pretty hot. I think I might ask her out. You're good, Tiger. All right, dude. I'll see you later. Hey. Hey. How's your day been going? Um, good. Yours? It's been pretty good. You know, last night I was uh, looking on your Facebook and I saw that you play soccer. I think that's really cool. I used to play basketball, but then I had to stop because my grades started failing and then I got sick and I couldn't catch up with my grades. But, you know, today is actually pretty cool. I'm wearing my socks from fourth grade. Yeah, I know, it's pretty cool. And then in first grade, I actually had a dog named Spot, but he kind of died, and he's buried right down the street, actually, like, no more than two blocks away. It's actually pretty close. Maybe we could go see it, you know, whatever. My kitten's name is Salsa, because she's really spicy. I got her about last year. She's about two years old, but she's really cute. And my toothbrush, I just got it last night. It's green. It's my favorite color, and I mean, I just love green. I, I'd wear a green shirt every day if I could. My room's blue because that's my second favorite color. I have blue sheets, blue walls, blue pillows, everything. And I can also speak French. I think that's really cool. I mean, I don't like to brag, but it's pretty cool. And I also like the garden carrots in my free time because I really like vegetables and carrots are just good with everything. And then this summer, I went to New York. And oh, I mean, hey, Catherine! <laughs> How's your day been? Oh, it's been pretty good. Yours? Pretty good. You remember that guy, Jack, I was telling you about? Yeah, I know Jack. Um, so I was at my locker earlier, and he was right there when I closed the door. Like, he was there. And uh, he was telling me all this random stuff, like, his kitten is, like, spicy or something, and he wears old socks, and... I just don't really know if he's the kind of person I want to hang out with. Yeah, I would think not. I just feel really uncomfortable with him. Yeah, you should probably you know, stay away. I'll do that. Well, thanks. No problem. Hi. Now listen, I, you know, I think you see in that clip that the girl was kind of interested in that guy until he came on too strong. He revealed too much of himself too quickly. We're talking about today divine revelation, and the fact that God respects our humanity and is sensitive to kind of our sensibilities in the way He reveals Himself to us. And what I specifically want to talk about right now is not just that He comes on very gently and He doesn't overwhelm us with revelation, but I want to talk about the relationship between freedom and love, because I think it's really a very foundational principle that you need to understand. Look, the modern world asks, why doesn't God just show himself more? Why doesn't God pop down from the sky right now in the parking lot outside of this church and stop playing the game and show himself to me? Well, now, at first blush, that seems like a pretty compelling argument to say, yeah, gosh, I really don't know why he doesn't just come down and do that. But here's the problem. What if God came down in all of his splendor and all of his glory assuming that we're right about God, could He show Himself to us in that way? Well, many would argue that we would die of fright if we saw Him that way. So, there's a problem here. The world wants God to reveal Himself, but maybe He can't do what the world wants Him to do. So you would ask yourself, well, why doesn't He reveal Himself more? Why doesn't God come down to every major city in the United States, every major city, on Sunday morning at 9 o'clock for one hour and he sort of veils his face some. I mean, you still know it's God, but you don't really fully see him. Why doesn't he do that? 
Well, if we're honest, I think we have to say, even if he did that, people in small towns would say, well, why doesn't God come to our town? If he's really God and he's really omnipotent and he's really omnipresent, why isn't he here? And why just on Sunday morning? We'd want more. And so God appears every day at nine o'clock and not just in the major cities, but in the small towns. Well, why does he have to appear in the town square? Why can't he appear in my home? If he's really God, if he's really omnipresent, he could show up in my home. Do you see where I'm going? The fact is that if we ask for more and more, we want God to reveal himself more and more. But it seems like God can never reveal himself enough for our taste. There would always be somebody who would say, well, look, if he's really God, he should reveal himself more. Because look at the historic reality. He did reveal himself in, in a burning bush to Moses. Various prophets have heard God speak. Various prophets have had face-to-face -face encounters with God. And this son of his, this Jesus Christ, is the fullness of God's revelation. And people said, nope, that's too ordinary. He's just some carpenter from Galilee. He can't possibly really be God. You see, no matter how much God shows himself, we're always going to be able to reject and that's the point that I want to make next. It's so essential that we are free to reject. If God revealed himself fully to us and somehow kept us from dying, wouldn't that revelation violate our freedom? Wouldn't that come on so strong, like the boy in the video, that we wouldn't have any choice but to believe in him and love him? But here's the problem. If you don't have the freedom to love, if you don't have the freedom to reject, you don't really love. I mean, my pet doesn't love me. He, he depends on me. I take care of him. But he's not really free to reject a relationship with me. And because he's not free, it's not really love. Imagine that I told you that I really love my wife. I mean, she means the world to me. I think about her when I wake up. Every decision I make, I, I ask myself, how will this affect Connie? I think about her all day. Um, I can't wait to get home to be with her. She, she, just, she is the end all and be all in my heart. And because I love her so much and because her, her love for me is so vital to my actual existence, I keep her chained up in the basement in my home. What would you think? You would think, man, that is a serious messed up dude. It, to keep some woman locked up in his basement. That's not love. That's bondage. That's using. That's, you can call it a thousand different things, but you cannot call it love. Likewise, or to conclude that point, if we're not free, if we cannot freely choose God, then it's not love. And God loves us so much that he wants us to love him back. He wants sons and daughters not slaves. And so he gave us freedom to accept his love or not. And he gave us that freedom even though he knew it was going to cost him the death of his son on the cross. And he gave that to us precisely so that we could choose to love. And God will never violate that freedom. He will never violate that freedom. Maybe, just maybe, he has revealed himself as much as he can without violating our freedom. Thanks. Come. Take a closer walk with me. Let me explain the rules. Rules? Yeah, you left in such a rush, I didn't get a chance to explain. Yeah. Two extra fingers freak me out a little bit. <laughs> I just figured I'd get your attention. <laughs> I did the same thing to Gandhi. He didn't eat for three weeks. <laughs> anyway, here's the deal. You have all my powers. Use them any way you choose. There are only two rules. You can't tell anybody you're God. Believe me, you don't want that kind of attention. And you can't mess with free will. Uh-huh. Can I ask why? Yes, you can. That's the beauty of it. Enjoying your party? Nothing like spending quality time with great friends, huh? Grace left me. 
Yeah, I know. She'll take me back. But she'll take me back, right? Would you take me back? Oh. How do you make somebody love you without affecting free will? <laughs> Welcome to my world, son. You come up with an answer to that one, you let me know. Yeah, I gotta go. Wait! Uh, how do you feel now? Have you completely lost your mind? What, are you drunk? Yeah, I'm drunk. Drunk with power. <sighs> Love me. Love me. Love me. Love me! I did. Yeah, I know, free will.